um, regarding around remittances and uh, sort of posing a, a possible situation that if the U.S. were allowing more migrants to come in as, uh, as far as bringing full families in, reconnecting families, would less money potentially be sent back to their native country and would broader implication, immigration laws negatively impact poor countries in this way? Now, most of the information that we have around uh, remittances is, is that new immigrants, with or without their families, tend to send more money back home than those who have stayed over seven to ten years. And so it's not dependent on the variable of having family reunification. It's much more how, much, how long have they been in the United States. And I think what we need to do is respond to the reality of remittances. In Latin America, they're sending $60 billion a year in remittances. A lot of that goes to keep kids in school, help families, put food on the table, clothing, and so it does improve the standard of living. We need to find ways in which a lot of that money could also uh, go in to stimulate economic development. And we have to remember that that amount of money is three times foreign direct investment from the private sector and four times as large as all of the government aid put together from the United States, from Europe, or from Asia. So this is where the money is right now, and we need to find mechanisms that can help create a pool of funds that could contribute to ongoing development over time. This is one of the issues we're working on right now uh, at CRS to look at are there other ways in which we could create a pool of funding that would be used for investment in the United States as well as overseas based on these remittance flows. 